नमस्ते आई एम डॉक्टर सचिन गेंगजे हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग एट वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट अ ब्रीफ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन आउटकम बेस्ड एजुकेशन फ्रॉम नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी पर्सपेक्टिव एज वी नो नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 is very distinct and transformative there are many components of the national education policy we can look at like the credit bank facility the curricular framework allowing student to select amongst the multidisciplinary ug and pg programs facility for dual join and twinning degree simultaneously and of course an important component of teaching learning outcome based education and evaluation reforms so in today's session we will briefly discuss about the outcome based education from nep 2020 perspective uh this is the different modes of the teaching learning suggested in nep the conventional mode of offline teaching which consists of chalk and talk use of the ppt is also supported then there is a facility of distance learning there is a facility of blended learning where the student can transfer the credit from different platforms or the virtual facilities available like mooc or swayam then of course an important augmentation is with the experiential learning which may consist of the internship which may consist of project based learning so these are the different modes of teaching and learning recommended in nep another important aspect of national credit framework is it enables the credit for all different type of the learning as we have seen there are different components of learning it may be a classroom teaching it may be seminar it may be project it may be student taking some mooc courses student doing on job training or internship student contributing into social work or community so for all these type of activity or learning experiences the credits are being suggested in national credit framework as today's topic we are coming to that and that is about the outcome based education national education policy also recommend what is called as an outcome based education or popularly called as an obe the basic philosophy behind obe is that in obe we start with end in our mind so first we have to consider end then based on the end what the graduate is going to become we are setting some crisp educational goals the meaning of the word crisp here the goals should be measurable it should be achieved within the time frame and so on so very objective goals are being set and then the entire educational process which consists of the curriculum and assessment all that is designed based on the goals so we have to ensure that the graduates are going to meet the goals which we have defined outcome based education can be defined as uh, starting with a clear picture of what is important for a student so it's a, it's about the student what is important for him and what he is able to do during his graduation and of course after his graduation when he is serving for the society and then based on these goals we have to align the curriculum the delivery of the curriculum and the assessment and so as to ensure that the learning of the student is actually happening outcome based education focuses 
on the development and assessment of certain knowledge skills and behavioral aspect into the student when he is taking the education during undergraduate or postgraduate program a very simple model of outcome based education can be defined as for our ug or pg program the student is taking admission and after the graduation we are converting not him not only as a graduate but we are trying to mold him as a graduate with certain abilities the features of the outcome based education suggested are first of all it should be need driven the curricula is designed in term of the contemporary knowledge skill and at attitude that is expected from the society and maybe from the industry the second important thing is that of course the outcome based education should based on the outcome right so it must it must first we may must define the goals and the aim and then entirely process the entire process of the education should be set such that these are learning goals or objectives are achieved third important aspect is that it is a design down approach although we are first deciding the goals and objective that student must achieve however the entire the educational system or the processes are designed based on that then it specifies outcomes and level in terms of some measurable parameter and a very popular uh, measures or the popular uh, uh, popular uh, measures which are being used are the learning objectives are described in terms of blooms uh, cognitive affective and psychomotor domain so there are blooms taxonomy which is being used to measure these outcomes or rather to map these outcomes then in case of outcome based education there is a paradigm shift the focus is shifting from teaching to learning there is a very popular saying that we are teaching but are the student learning so the model is about the student and it is not about the teacher and teacher has to act the teacher has to act as a mentor or supervisor for them then the framework is a comprehensive and holistic framework although we are defining the objectives and goals maybe in terms of the course outcome or maybe in terms of the program outcome but it is bigger than that right so whatever the goals we are goals we are expecting or objective they are we are trying to set up not only they cover the abilities and the skills of the student which they acquire during the graduation but it goes beyond that and it, we are trying to make that student uh, 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 as a successful person throughout his life so this entire framework is comprehensive and holistic now how what is this exactly framework about which we are talking outcome based education framework so it consists of first as, as i said it all start with first you are setting certain objectives and outcome then comes the defining outcome based the process that entire process need to be defined then based on these objectives and outcome the curriculum is being designed and then there is an actually learning happening the delivery is being made in terms of the various various aspect that we have seen it may be a classroom teaching it may be mooc courses it may be some extra curricular and co curricular activity it may be a blended education so the actual delivery and learning of actually delivery of the education is taking place and then there is what is called as an important aspect called as an assessment and evaluation of whatever we have delivered we have to assess and we have to ensure that whatever the outcomes that we have or objective that we have set are being achieved or not these learning outcome so the entire framework is based on what is called as the learning outcome we know that there are different types of the learning outcome like there can be course outcome or there can be program outcome there can be pro program educational objective what are these learning outcome there are there are there are certain categories of these learner, learning outcome the first one is what it it consists of what student should know or understand and that is of course what is called as the knowledge the second one is what student should able to do 
it may be a programming or it may be some hands on and those and, and then all that comes under what is called as the skills the third one is how students should behave and that we know is called as a behavioral aspect or the attitude and lastly how students should be alike that consist of the values and ethics of the student so entire these learning outcome whichever we are defined they should be based on these four types now some of the learning outcomes uh, for the ug program can be defined as uh, the student can apply the knowledge uh, for the professional approach whichever profession is he is into or whichever work he is into whatever the knowledge he has gained throughout his education or the program undergraduate or the postgraduate program he should able to apply it for his professional for his profession then the other learning outcome important is that uh, he should have some research attitude like he should able to gather and interpret the data and then uh, he should able to apply it for societal scientific or ethical issues the third one is that he must able to evaluate the impact of his work whatever again whatever profession or work he may be doing then what are what is what is a societal and environmental impact of that he must able to evaluate that and most importantly whatever the applications whatever the work he is whatever the work he is doing it should be for the sustainable development another aspect another aspect important important aspect may be regarding the communication he must be able to communicate his information his ideas problems and solution both to specialist and non specialist audience it is not always that he is dealing with the specialist or very learned audience but even to the uh, non specialist audience or which are not from his domain he must able to communicate all these things and then most importantly the student must be a lifelong learner so he must have that attitude or the skills developed to study further and then he must be a lifelong learner so these are some of the example outcome that that nep is trying to build among the students then the another important part about the nep we are not going into the details of that but it talks about what is called as an assessment and evaluation now although these two terms assessment and evaluation are very loosely used by the people but they have different meaning basically assessment is a very is a very objective process for identifying collecting and assessing the data and it is more more objective marks may be or the numbers may be associated with the assessment on the other hand the evaluation is storming your brain or trying to understand the outcome of the assessment trying to interpret that data whatever the evidence is being accumulated during the assessment thinking on that is called as an evaluation now whether it is an assessment or the evaluation it we must have a process nep suggests that we must have a process which will address three questions who is going to do the assessment and evaluation when what is the frequency whether it will be done it will be done continuously whether it is done after th every 3 month or 6 month or a year when it is being done and most important question is how that assessment and evaluation is being done so there must be a very defined process very detailed process comprehensive process must be in a place which answers these questions of who when and how related to assessment and evaluation if you try to compare the assessment and evaluation we can see that the assessment is a continuous process nep recommends that the assessment should not be only at the end of the semester or only at the end of the year but it should be a continuous process it is positive and then based on the assessment the individual uh, is getting the feedback on his performance on the other hand the evaluation is at the end once that assessment is complete assessment is being done then there can be an assessment it is more more subjective assessment is very objective the evaluation may be judgmental or subjective it is applied against some standard and then the purpose of evaluation is to show some shortfall to find out what are the weaker areas and then to improve upon it during the next cycle of course whether it is an assessment or evaluation it require basically as i say when how and 
uh, who, when, and how. So it must uh, it must require certain criteria to measure the evidence, whether it's an assessment or evaluation. To just that ev evidence or to measure that evidence, must we must define the criteria, the owners who are going to do the assessment or evaluation, and the time frame when this assessment or evaluation can be done. This is what is the assessment management suggested again for the NEP. As I say, the assessment should not be only at the end of the semester or at the end of the year, but it should be a continuous process. It may be done daily, then summarized on the weekly basis, then at the end of the unit there should be some certain assessment and of course at the end of the course, which is usually at the end of the semester, there can be assessment. The tools which are being used for the assessment, as you can see the tools or or what is being assessed is also it can be it can be a different right so so there can be an end semester examination or there can be a class test this requires a different types of assessment uh, there, there there can be certain activities like seminar or group discussion then there should be different tools for the assessment your project and the project based learning should have a different type of assessment assignments and tutorials and open ended problem should have different types of assessment tools self study uh, and then the MOOC courses, they may have different types of the assessment. So as NEP suggests different type of teaching, learning methods and modalities, so based on that, the assessment tools shall be uh, defined. So they should be, there should be different assessment method used for the class test, ex end examination, seminar, then there should be quizzes, then there should be long tests, there should be short tests. In short, the assessment is an important aspect of the NEP which also forms a very integral part of the outcome based education. So with that we come to the end of this today's session where I try to explain or try to describe in very short uh, the outcome based education aspect and the assessment aspect which is being suggested in NEP 2020. So thank you very much for your patient listening.